ITRAG UMAC program and uh, main priorities and how you can be involved uh, in the future. Um, before to start, I would like to introduce um, and give the floor to, first of all, Kurt Cervalli, the coordinator of JS of Interagmed and uh, to Alessandra Sensi of the Union for Mediterranean. So just please, Curzio. Thank you, Francesca. Good morning. Bonjour. Uh, it's a very pleasure to be here again. Uh, this is the second time, uh, as Francesca said, uh, we uh, organized such a kind of meeting. Just to underline the importance for us uh, to, to go further than our eligible area, uh, the north of uh, the Mediterranean uh, Sea. So uh, we are trying, as probably you already know, uh, to, uh, to establish uh, a new orientation, a new links with uh, all actors working also in, uh, in the south area of the Mediterranean uh, Sea. Uh, as we are going to explain to you, it's not possible for us, uh, by regulation, to co-finance uh, directly uh, beneficiary uh, based on the south, but uh, we have thought uh, the possibility to uh, offer you the, the, the associated partner status. So we are going to explain better uh, what we are meaning uh, by that. But uh, what is important for us today in this moment is to, uh, to enlarge uh, uh, the understanding uh, you have, the knowledge you have about the, the REG Euromed program for the next uh, programming period in order to, to be able uh, to create a new bridge uh, between north-south, south-north, also including our colleagues from the uh, ENI MED for this programming period of 1420 and next MED for the, the next one. So, uh, as you understand, uh, what is really essential is to create synergies to create uh, new partnerships, uh, not take into account uh, the border, uh, even because in the sea there are no borders. So thank you very much for being uh, uh, with us today. And uh, we are continue with uh, the contribution of, of Alessandra Sensi. Please, Alessandra, good morning. Thank you very much. Good morning to everybody. It's a great pleasure to be here again to get, uh, together. Um, I'd like to start indeed by thanking uh, uh, the Interagmed for this uh, change in direction, as it was mentioned by Kurz a few minutes ago. It's very important indeed to look at the wider Mediterranean to uh, ensure the links uh, uh, north-south. So we would like really to thank the uh, Interreg uh, Euromed for activating all the available tools uh, and uh, modalities for the Southern Partner to be uh, part of this uh, greater exercise. Uh, we think indeed that this is a game changing. Uh, also, the partnership indeed between uh, uh, Euromed and the CB and sorry and Interreg Med uh, Next. Um, indeed, as it was mentioned, a uh, lot. Uh, has been done in terms of activities in the past. There is the possibility to capitalize and indeed to capitalize all uh, together. Uh, we are also happy that uh, this is a second, let's say, uh, round of sort of awareness raising uh, webinars that are being uh, uh, run and uh, indeed the partners of the South have shown uh, already a very high level of responsiveness to the first call. So we really, and with this I will close, hope that uh, uh, similarly um, we'll uh, also um, be involved in this uh, second round of calls. Thank you very much to everybody and I leave you the floor. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. And I would like to thank you also the Union for Mediterranean for the support uh, all this, uh, this process. Uh, and I take also the occasion to thank you also our colleagues of uh, West Med Initiative and DGMI also for their contribution in the organization also of the, uh, the previous uh, workshop. Um, so today, 
I, we can start to present the, uh, the program. We Sorry, I took Okay. So uh, we will just introduce to the program and then um, how you can participate concretely to the Euro Interact Euromed program as associated partners. And at the end, we will have also some testimonies of some associated partners that have been involved in the program uh, in, these, um, in, the, in the ongoing projects. So just to introduce you the, the framework, the Interag Euromed program is a transnational European uh, program uh, with a budget allocation for the next seven years of 294 million. And it covers all the uh, Mediterranean countries of the north shore of Mediterranean. Um, from countries, uh, 69 regions from 14 countries from Union, uh, European Union, but also candidates to, to European Union. And for example, we have Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Montenegro and North Macedonia that are covered by the program. Um, the main objective of the program is to the contribution to them a more climate neutral and resilient society. And uh, for us, as mentioned also by Curzio and Alessandra, it's really important to strengthen the link with the South, East and South countries uh, in order to have a real impact in all the whole area, the Mediterranean area. And we think that we have all uh, to work together. And the program has, uh, in the last years, uh, st start to uh, improve the synergies with other programs, other initiatives and strategies that are uh, working in the Mediterranean in order to uh, coordinate and cooperate together to face common priorities. What are the priorities for the program? Uh, we have uh, four main missions uh, in, the, uh, in the next seven years. So the first one is on uh, innovative sustainable economy. This is the, the first mission. The second one is uh, addressed to the pr protection, restoration and valorization of natural and cultural heritage. Uh, the third one is the promotion of green living areas. And the last one, the improvement of a sustainable tourism. Each mission has its own specific objectives. Uh, you can see here, for example, the first mission. Uh, under the first mission, we have two specific objectives. One more linked to a more competitive innovation ecosystem. And the second one on circular economy. The, the, the second mission is more declined in two specific objectives, one linked to the climate change adaptation and risk prevention, and the second one on more protection of biodiversity. Concerning the green living areas, we have one specific objective that is linked to climate change adaptation and risk prevention, and the tourism is for us cross-cutting all the, uh, the priorities of the program. So this is just to give you an idea of the main um, challenges of the program and also because our call for proposal actually are open per uh, specific objectives. But maybe to give you more concrete ideas on what is funded by the program, we would like to give some examples per mission of action that we can found. For example, for the mission one, we, we, we promote, we improve the, the development, for example, of circular products, including eco-design and eco-innovative business models. Uh, we support sustainable practices for waste reduction and prevention. Uh, we uh, support the cooperation coordination of the four Alex stakeholders and also uh, all the new business models that are uh, in, in addressing to the um, climate transition, for example. So these, those are some examples of action that can be founded under Mission 1. 
Under mission two, uh, we will um, we can found some action mainly addressed to the connection and the enlargement of protected areas in land and sea, but also restoration of degraded and polluted ecosystems, and all the plans that are uh, addressing to the prevention and management of disaster risk caused by climate change. And of course, uh, an important attention to awareness raising and promotion of environmental uh, culture. Concerning the mission three, the focus are living areas, so including, of course, urban areas. And the idea here is to finance plans and strategies for energy transition and improve the quality of life in uh, living areas, but also the capacity of public authorities to plan and finance climate change adaptation and, and uh, integrate in the territories this, uh, this approach. And for the last mission, so sustainable tourism, the actions are addressed mainly um, to combine the, the, the tourism with the protection, for example, of natural resources, with the protection of cultural heritage, but also with the um, circular economy, so a new way to think tourism um, in a more sustainable, uh, with a, a more sustainable approach, and those contribution to um, try to, to improve the environmental and natural tourism, with also uh, action addressed to innovation and research in the tourism sector. So this is just a brief uh, for you, a brief explanation of main priorities of the program. Uh, which type of project are co-funded? Now um, we have opened a call for thematic projects, but also in the future will be the main uh, type of project that will be uh, funded. Thematic projects, so all the projects that are addressing all the priorities that I have presented um, before. And we have uh, different type of project, study, test and transfer. Uh, study, just to be clear, um, they consist of projects of 18 months, so they are short projects. Uh, we are not funded as, for example, Horizon um, long and uh, studying project. It's a short project that are in support of the test. Uh, in support of test of solution strategies in, that you intend to implement in the territory um, and that if uh, they have a successful, let's say, results, they can be transferred in other territories of the uh, Mediterranean area. So the, those are the three type of projects that can be funded by, by the program. Uh, how you can be part of it? So you can be um, partners, can be received directly funds. You have all the list. So they are coming from European Union or IPA countries, the countries that I have mentioned before. And as you can see, all type of partners can be involved. But here, maybe for you, it's more interesting to see the list of associated partners. So all type of partners can be part of the program. Could be a local, regional or national public authority, a sectoral agency, could be a NGO, a SMEs, so private also and public partners, research, training center, um, but also um, other higher education and uh, infrastructure or service providers. So, really you have all type of partners that, that can be involved as associated. And how they can be, uh, be part? What is the difference uh, between the co-founded and the associated partners? The co-founded, they are coming from European Union countries or IPA. So as I mentioned, Albania, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina and North Macedonia. And the associated partners can be from any country, third country, within or outside the European Union. The co-founded partners, uh, they receive a co-finance co of 80% by the program. 
and the associated partners, they cannot receive funds, but they can cover um, travel and accommodation costs can be covered by a co-founded partners. So you can participate directly in the activities of the project and be invited and all the cost of travel accommodation can be covered by the project. Um, the co-founded partners, of course, they have a limited uh, number because depending on the project, they can be 8, 10 or 8, uh, let's say it's recommended number. For associated partners, there is no limit. So they can be, uh, a project can have several associated partners and you can join the project all over when you want. So, for example, now we will close the, the call at the end of October, but you can join uh, and reach the project also after, during all the implementation of the project. And, um, of course, you can cover as associated partners different roles. <laughs> Oh. You, can, you can be an advisor to provide expertise to a project. Uh, and here I would like to underline that you cannot participate as an external expert. I mean, you cannot receive or have a subcontractor to, have, to be a subcontractor of a project, but you can invite, as I mentioned before, to give, for example, in an advisory, advisory board, and um, your cost of travel accommodation can be covered. Or you can be an end user, so um, just follow the results of the project and use the, the, the outputs produced by the project. Or you can be an observer to support the project, but also to endorse some strategy solution that have been produced by the, the project. So, these are the three main roles that an associated partners can cover in the project. And finally, how to become a partner. So you have, uh, if you enter in the website of the program, so the Interreg Euromed program, you have this section called Get Involved. And here you have all the call for proposal open, uh, actually open, and also that will be open in the future. And at the end of this page, you have find project partners. And here you can create, so you can create your and login into the forum and uh, find partners that are involved or they are looking for uh, associated partners. So this is a, a way to, uh, to be involved in, in a project. But also, you can also contact directly us and we give you uh, all the information on how to, to participate. So, uh, this is the, uh, the main presentation. I, um, I give the floor to, uh, before, I give the floor to Fatima that will briefly summarize the content that I have explained until now, but in Arabic. Um, so, Fatima, thank you. Thank you so much. Good morning. السلام عليكم آه، الان ساقوم يعني بترجمه ما قالته آه الزميله اول شيء يعني سنتحدث عن البرنامج الاقليمي آه لاوروميد آه برنامج الاقليمي لاوروميد كما قالت هو برنامج عبر وطني يغطي دول جنوب البحر الابيض المتوسط آه وهو يعني يشمل 40 دوله من دول الاتحاد الاوروبي وغيرها من الدول التي ترغب في الانضمام الى الاتحاد الاوروبي من المهم خلق يعني علاقات مع شمال وجنوب البحر الأبيض المتوسط كما علق جميع الزملاء وعلينا جميعا أن نعمل معا لتحقيق الأهداف أول شيء يعني سنتحدث عن الإطار العام والأهداف الرئيسية للبرنامج كما قلنا فهو برنامج يعني يشمل مختلف بلدان البحر الأبيض المتوسط في الجنوب وفي الشمال 
وبعد ذلك يعني سنتحدث عن الأهداف أو المهام يعني الرئيسية لهذا البرنامج من بين المهام الرئيسية للبرنامج الإقليمي إوروميد لدينا أول شيء تعزيز السياحة المستدامة تعزيز مناطق المعيشة الخضراء حماية واستعادة وتثمين البيئة الطبيعية والتراث وفي الآخر تعزيز اقتصاد مبتكر ومستدام لكي نفوت أكثر يعني في تفاصيل يعني المهامات والأولويات بالنسبة لتعزيز السياحة المستدامة علينا ترسيخ بيئة ابتكارية تنافسية دعم الاقتصاد الدائري تعزيز التكييف مع تغيير المناخ المناخ ومنع المخاطر تعزيز الطبيعة وتنوع البيولوجي بالنسبة لتعزيز مناطق المعيشة الخضراء علينا أن نركز على تعزيز التكيف مع تغيير المناخ ومنع المخاطر بالنسبة للمهام الثالث وهو حماية واستعادة وتثمين البيئة الطبيعية والتراث علينا أن نعمل لتعزيز التكيف مع تغير المناخ ومنع المخاطر كما علينا أن العمل على تعزيز الطبيعة والتنوع البيولوجي بالنسبة لآخر مهام وهو تعزيز اقتصاد مبتكر ومستدام علينا أن نعمل لترسيخ بيئة ابتكارية تنافسية ودعم الاقتصاد الدائري إيه لكي نفوت في تفاصيل أكثر أيضا إيه بالنسبة للمهام التي نتحدث عنها إيه علينا تعزيز الاقتصاد إيه مستدام ومبتكر إيه بهذا يعني إيه نحن نتحدث عن الابتكارات الصديقة للمناخ ممارسات إيه الأعمال المستدامة والتعاون عبر القطاعات للشركات الصغيرة والمتوسطة مليات التحول الصناعي ونموذج الأعمال الجديدة سلسلة القيمة, التع... سلسلة القيمة التعاون داخل التجمعات تدويل الشركات الصغيرة والمتوسطة التعاون والتنسيق ما بين أصحاب المصلحة التمويل الأخضر ووصول الشركات الصغيرة والمتوسطة إلى التمويل من المنتجات والخدمات المبتكرة وأيضا المنتجات الدائرية بما في ذلك التصميم البيئي والنموذج الأعمال المبتكرة الممارسات المستدامة للحد من النفايات والوقاية منها وهذه نقطة جد مهمة ومعالجة توليد النفايات والإفراد في التعبئة والتغليف التركيز على البلاستيك كأهم نقطة السلطات العامة في تطوير واعتماد استراتيجيات تؤدي إلى الانتقال إلى الاقتصاد الدائري على المستوى المحلي الإقليمي بالنسبة يعني للمهام التي تحدثنا عنه فعندنا أول نقطة هي حماية واستعادة وتثمين البيئة الطبيعية والتراث وهنا نركز على تحسين الاتصال وتوسيع المناطق المحمية في البر والبحر تعزيز استعادة النظام البيئية المتدهورة والملوثة في البر والبحر زيادة القدرة على منع وإدارة مخاطر الكوارث باستخدام أدوات وممارسات متوفقة على المستوى عبر الوطني التنسيق وتعاون مع وتعاون من اجل الاداره المشتركه والوقايه من مخاطر الكوارث تطوير واعتماد استراتيجيات خطط عمل لتكيف وتغير المناخ والقدره على الصمود رفع الوعي والترويج للثقافه البيئيه ايضا بالنسبه للمهام الثاني تعزيز مناطق العيش الخضراء هنا نركز على رؤية متكاملة لتكيف المناطق مع تغيير المناخ خطط واستراتيجيات للانتقال الطاقة والتنقل المستدام لتأمين وتحسين جودة البيئة والمعيشة زيادة قدرة السلطات العامة على تخطيط وتمويل الفعالين للتكيف مع تغير المناخ وانتقال الطاقة مشاركة المواطنين في مناطق العيش أكثر استدامة بالنسبة للمهام الثالث وهو تعزيز السياحة المستدامة 
فهنا نركز على دمج السياحة في الاقتصاد الدائري المساهمة في السياحة البيئية المحايدة تحسين استدامة خدمات النظام البيئي الحفاظ على الموارد الطبيعية والتقليل من التلوث تعزيز الابتكار والبحث في قطاع السياحة بالنسبة للسؤال التي نطرح, نطرح أيضا وهو ما نوع المشاريع التي يتم تمويلها بشكل مشترك نوع المشارك المشاريع هو يعني مشاريع مواضيعية ومشاريع حكومية ولكن نحن نركز هذه السنة فقط على المشاريع الموضوعية الموضوعية عفوا بالنسبة للمشاريع الموضوعية عندنا الاختبار دراسة والنقل وكيف يمكنك أن تكون جزء من الشركاء المشاركون في التمويل أو المرتبطون به الشركاء المشاركون في التمويل أو المرتبطون به من هم؟ بالنسبة للجواب لهذا السؤال الأنواع المؤهلة من الشركاء لدينا شركاء بتمويل مشترك من الاتحاد الأوروبي وإيبا وهم السلطة العامة المحلية السلطة العامة الإقليمية السلطة العامة الوطنية وكالة قطاعية مزود البنية التحتية والخدمات العامة مجموعات المصالح بما في ذلك المنظمات غير الحكومية مؤسسات التعليم العالي والبحث مركز مراكز التعليم التدريب والمدرسة المؤسسة باستثناء الشركات الصغيرة المتوسطة منظمة دعم الأعمال، التجمع الأوروبي للتعاون الإقليمي EGTC بموجب القانون الوطني، بموجب القانون الدولي، منظمة دولية، مجموعة المصالح الاقتصادية الأوروبية، المستشفيات والمراكز إلى آخره. ويمكن للهيئات من جميع البلدان أن تكون شركاء مرتبطين. يعني بنفس التكرر يعني السلطات العامة المحلية، السلطات العامة الإقليمية، السلطات العامة الوطنية إلى آخره كما ذكرنا من قبل. شركاء التمويل المشترك أو شركاء المرتبطين. هنا نحن نتحدث عن الوضع، وضع هذول هؤلاء الشركاء. فهنا نتحدث عن شركاء التمويل المشترك. أو شركاء المرتبطون المرتبطين عفوا بالنسبة لشركاء التمويل المشترك فنحن نتحدث عن الهيئات من دول الاتحاد الأوروبي والدول المشتركة في البرنامج بموجب أداة ما قبل الالتصاق بالنسبة لشركاء المرتبطين نحن نتحدث عن هيئات من أي بلد داخل أو خارج الاتحاد الأوروبي عندما نتحدث عن شركاء التمويل المشترك نحن نتحدث عن ميزانية بتمويل مشترك بنسبة 80% عدد محدود لكل فئة مشروع الحد الأقصى الموصى به هو 8 للدراسة و10 للاختبار و8 للتحويل تنفيذ الأنشطة والتقرير وفقا للملف الشخصي الدراسة مؤسسة عملية الاختبار مؤسسة عملي التحويل مؤسس شبكات بالنسبة لشركاء المرتبطين لدي هنا نتحدث عن أنهم لا تتلقى أموالا ولكن يمكن لشريك التمويل المشترك المزدوج تغطية تكاليف السفر والإقامة عدد غير محدود من المحتمل يمكن إضافتها في أي وقت المشاركة في الأنشطة حسب القيمة المضافة المستشاري المستخدمين النهائيين مراقب بالنسبة لشركاء التمويل المشترك وشركاء, وشركاء المرتبطون الأدوار المرتبطين كمستشارين لتقديم الخبرة ربط المستخدمين النهائيين باستخدام المخرجات المنتسبين بصفة مراقب للدعم والتأييد شركاء التمويل المشترك والشركاء المرتبطون كيف تصبح شريكاً؟ 
هنا يعني لدينا موقع ممكن أن نفوت عليه ونسجل تحقق من موقع البرنامج للدعوة لتقديم العروض التسجيل في منتدى الشركاء كما تحدثنا وهذا هو كل شيء شكرا Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Fatima. Um, maybe we can uh, open if there are some questions before to to go to the testimonies. So I don't know if you have some questions. Uh, you want to additional information on some uh, that what we have presented until now. You can also write in the chat if you want to raise your hand or raise your hands. Okay, <laughs> well, it seems clear for you. Anyway, we are here also to answer to your. Ah, yeah. Yeah, hello, good morning. Good morning, why? Yeah, yeah uh, my name is Hamza Massad. I'm from Jordan Academy for Maritime Studies, Amman, Jordan. Uh, and actually, I was wondering uh, if you can share with us a list of the projects that are running now uh, and uh, how we can contribute to this project. Yeah, in fact, we have just opened um, a call for proposal uh, that will be closed end of October. Okay, but as associated partners, you can also be involved uh, after the approval and all all the duration of the project. So, for example, um, you you will have, if you want, you will have the list of projects that will be approved per mission and topic. And if you are interested in of one of them, we can keep you in touch with the lead partner of the project and you can, you know, be involved as associated partners whenever you want during the implementation of the project. This would be excellent. So yes, indeed, as we are on new programming period, we don't have now ongoing projects, but we are going to uh, to to select a while, some uh, within this call in uh, the coming month. So this is why we don't have now um, running projects uh, at this moment. Yeah, and but, but, but you expect by end of October the list of projects will be almost finalized uh, and will then be under study uh, for approval, right? Yes, exactly. They will be uh, submitted by the end of October and then we will uh, process with the assessment and the approval of the project should come before summer. Okay, and do you expect by uh, end of the year uh, they will be totally approved? Uh, no, by by the summer, by the before summer, 2023. Okay, okay. Approval, yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, please, it's a Dean. Yes, uh, hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, Captain Zedin Kassem, the founder president of the marine cluster of Tunisia and uh, with me today also uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Amna Sohlubji, the general secretary also with me with us and it's very honor for us uh, to be a part of this project uh, as well as possible uh, and uh, uh, and uh, last week uh, we made the bed blue to Italian Tunisian Italian in Tunisia is a very important event uh, for two days and we are constituted now and I pass uh, my best regards to uh, Mrs. Alessandra Sensi with, with you and uh, uh, we are now uh, in a big project in the South Mediterranean South to uh, uh, establish the marine uh, the Maghreb marine uh, cl uh, maritime cluster for the five countries and the uh, maritime cluster of Tunisia is uh, the pilot uh, cluster in the south and there is a present in uh, uh, Tuesday uh, last week uh, all uh, from the foreign ministry of Algeria, Morocco, Mauritania and Libya and Tunisia with Italia also and uh, we do our best to inform you about uh, this uh, 
to constitute this Mar Mar Maghreb maritime cluster as soon as possible uh, uh, in the end of 2022, at least uh, uh, in the first of uh, 23. And it will be a good alliance between the north and the south for to make uh, uh, good projects between us and the Interreg Med. And it will be, uh, I think, uh, uh, something with Matteo Bocci also in Brussels. Uh, we are coordinating together to establish this uh, Maghreb maritime cluster and uh, for the alliance between the north and the south. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's really interesting for us also to be informed about that and why not to create synergies with clusters that are creating, that are now uh, in place in the north. So, of course, it's quite interesting also to follow this process. So just uh, be, we keep, uh, of course, in touch and uh, yes. it's really also interesting that you are involved uh, in, the, in the project that are working on this topic. Okay, thank you, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch together, and I will uh, inform you by, uh, step by step about that. Thank you so much. We have a couple of, que of questions in the chat. Are study, test and transfer different types of projects or aspects that need to be covered in one project? Indeed, there are different types of projects. Study projects, test projects, and transfer projects. In that call, uh, applicants will apply for one of them but not all aspects together but it, they, they will have the possibility if for approved projects to pass from one to another and to apply for the follow-up let's say for example if they apply for a study project when it will be finished they will have the possibility to apply for a follow-up for a test project and then um, there is a question about for the test projects, uh, in our definition of testing projects, we say that test projects experiment common instruments, policies, strategies already developed. Uh, and the question is if we mean developed as part of an iterate project or it can be also developed in general as part of any framework or any initiative. Indeed, um, we mean developed in general as part of any framework or initiative. It doesn't have to be developed by an interact uh, project, which is interesting here is to test initiatives, to test solutions, uh, action plans, strategies that haven't been um, implemented in the area. So it can, ha it, 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 it can happen that they have been developed in different frameworks and then we test the application in the Mediterranean um, area. Thank you. We have another question. There is another question on common activities with governance projects. How do we expect that much to happen when the governance projects uh, when we will have approved all governance projects, they will start before the thematic project starts. Uh, and so they will um, prepare the ground and the methodology in order to work with the thematic projects. And so uh, what we expect here in this call from thematic projects is to um, plan at least the mandatory and minimum activities that are included and listed in the terms of references of this call. And then the overall framework will be developed together once all projects are approved. That's it for the moment. So maybe... Okay. Yeah. So maybe we can uh, open the floor to some testimonies. Uh, we have received some feedback. Maybe we can check from the participants. Yeah, um, we have uh, Mr. Uh, Seladij. Are you here with us? Um, we can also welcome uh, Mrs. Youssef. 
if Miss uh, Mr. Terabi is not there yet. Um, let's check. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. We have another hand raise. Maybe we can uh, wait in for the testimonies. We can open again the floor. Uh, please, Jill Vulo. Yeah, hi. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, I'm guessing that I um, mean the next uh, call ends on uh, the thematic one ends at uh, the end of the month, and I'm. I'm guessing that most of the uh, proposal are well developed. How do I, um, you know, who, how can I inform that, you know, this is what I do and where I can potentially help join uh, such projects? Uh, in in this get involved thing, uh, I just post, uh, hey, this is what I do. This is my expertise and. Uh, or is there any? You know, I'm guessing there's no information on you know what kind of both are being set up <laughs> more internal. So, what's your advice on that? Uh, actually, you can um, you can enter into the getting involved page of the website and log in in the forum. So actually, is the only way uh, in, in which you can join some partners that are now. Uh, applying for the call for proposal. So they need to be looking uh, for possible partners. Exactly. If they are looking for some partners. Oh, oh, this guy might suit our uh, proposal, something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. And oh, anyway, uh, when we will approve the projects, uh, we will inform you uh, on the, we will publish the project that have been approved with the list of lead partners and the partners involved. So in case we can also, you can also reach directly lead partner or partners of the project approved in order to ask them to be part of the project as associated partners. So you can they... also join the, huh? the partnership after the approval as associated partners. Okay, so these projects will be published on the website and then you can approach. But yeah. do they put the money aside for associated partners in advance or is interact funding associated partners after a call has been? Uh, in, yeah, in uh, case, uh, anyway, a project have, um, you know, uh, the possibility to modify a little bit the budget that they have. So in case you join the project after, the approval as associated partners, they can arrange the budget in order to uh, to allocate some budget for travel accommodation and invite the, the new associated partners in their activities. They have to play with their with the budget that they've been given to accommodate this. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Thank you. To be involved after the the approval of your of the project. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have a question Hello. on the chat okay. on technical aspects regarding James. I would recommend to send uh, mm. on our faculty as question a uh, question because it's not the topic of this uh, of this meeting. Um, and there is a question about the fourth call that will be dedicated to uh, strategic territorial projects. And so um, the question is about the nature of those types of projects and how they differ from the thematic ones. Um, those projects will combine study, test and transfer uh, modules. So they will have uh, the capacity to work in all of, uh, for, for a longer time uh, on all of those aspects, but they will focus on one specific type of territory in a very specific uh, topic. For example, we will identify a very hot and important topic for islands or for ports or for mountains, etc. This uh, will uh, be, we will work on that during uh, the next year. Uh, and 
so we will of course give more information once we will have written the text of references in order uh, to um, to as it will be really important to 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 be informed on the topic and the type of territories selected for the call. So I think I'll, yeah, we, yeah, we, okay. are we can see that. Yes, colleagues yeah. are there for the testimonies. Um, and we do have Mrs. Youssef connected. Mrs. Youssef, Leila Youssef. You have participated um, in a project with um, the Urban Community Project. Are you there? Can you just confirm that you can hear me? Maybe there's a problem of connection. Yeah. If you cannot, um, if you're talking, but we cannot hear you, can you just write something in the chat? So. Seems like we do have a problem connecting. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes. Hello. hello. I'm so sorry hello. because I have some issue with my connection. Oh, uh, right. Yes. I would like to apologize. Uh, yes, we have a uh, very interesting project with the urban community related to question of uh, urban mobility. And uh, it was very uh, excellent experience. Um, the, the project, um, I don't know if you have a specific question to ask me or you want me? Well, first of all, um, can you just uh, tell us how you managed to to enter the, the the project or did you hear about it and what happened yes. and, uh, how uh, how yes. came the idea uh, first, to participate in the project yes uh, you know i'm a urban planner so uh, i'm very interested to the uh, project of urban mobility in the city uh, more specifically our city face uh, very uh, different uh, different challenges related to the climate change and more specifically related to the urban mobility and uh, I have do a lot of research so um, and um, we have also uh, uh, collaborate with the med cities in one of uh, we have training with the med cities uh, related to another subject so there is two point uh, I am very I have to research so I find the call concerning the urban mobility uh, issue so um, I elaborate I contact them and I elaborate my uh, uh, my call proposal uh, with clear methodology, with clear problematic, with uh, uh, um, related uh, more specifically to the uh, urban city case, and uh, I send uh, this document to the um, urban community. So I think we have uh, been, um, not I think, but we have been uh, uh, selected to participate in this project. Yes. And well, uh, um, yes, yes. No, no, no. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, uh, and after this, uh, we have saw um, the, the experience of uh, to elaborate the project, and this is this is the very important part for me because um, the the profession the. Um, the person who have flow us in the achievement of the project, uh, it is, uh, uh, I mean, he, it is specialist in this uh, field of urban uh, transportation mobility. So uh, we have do a very interesting field work. We use the GIS information system. We have uh, um, make a community uh, um, uh, team of community. Uh, of uh, students of the university and uh, other uh, um, interesting uh, stakeholders, which I mean uh, related to the project, uh, we uh, we uh, establish a group of them, uh, and we have uh, make uh, uh, different um, uh, field work. Uh, based in this, we have uh, elaborate also different workshop to make uh, more awareness about our project and how we can keep uh, the citizen in this uh, project, how we can 
change a little bit the mind, the culture of um, the local community concerning the use, for example, of bicycle, the use of public transport, transportation. Uh, and we finalize this uh, by uh, toolkits. It's a document. Uh, as a strategy, uh, which is a very interesting document, as uh, um, the municipality adopt it also, that we can start to do the same work for the other corridors as a study. And uh, so we uh, establish this document. We establish also at the end uh, awareness committee to talking about urban mobility issue in the city. Mm. Uh, in general, this is the general aspect of our project. And now, and now we are, uh, uh, we have not, uh, I think this is one of the kind of the sustainability of our project. Uh, that we have not stopped uh, when the project is finished. We have, we consider this project as a point to start uh, to conduct other, um, other project related to the urban mobility, to contact other uh, um, organization. This is what we are doing to finalize uh, as the World Bank, UN Habitat, and we take in base, uh, we, we, uh, we take in, the, in base this uh, project. When we start with them, we, gi we give a presentation about uh, this project and the output of this project and how we will use them to elaborate the sustainable uh, master plan for urban mobility for our city. So we consider it as a point to start another uh, phase in the, qu the question of mobility in our city. Uh, the another thing that we have a new mayor in our municipality and we have show we have make a presentation for him uh, for this present for this project he have been uh, very interested to the uh, this project and the output of this project and he asked us to can to, to make this study for different parts in our city thank you yeah, thank you um well yes um still it's, it's it's good. I mean, you 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 showed all the aspects of the project, but you already had a project on yourself, and uh, so it eased the, the process. And then you talked about the, the World Bank too. So, um, do you have an advice or something um, in terms? Because it's always the, the, the problem is about financing, and we know that collaborating with all projects, yeah. you don't have the finance, uh, direct finance. But um, is there anything you would advise uh, the partners that are listening to to you today uh, yeah, to yeah. to misguide? collaboration um, I think there is two points to understand um, we are looking until now to have another finance for the other project of urban mobility and we are working in this at the same time there is another important point is that what we have elaborated are as awareness community that we are internal working with the uh, with the uh, citizen with the local community to have um, more awareness about issue of uh, mobility in our city uh, how to use uh, how uh, um, to use the bicycle how to now we are thinking at the, after our discussion with the mayor you know um, how to elaborate uh, a specific infrastructure for uh, a bicycle is one of the output of this project. So there is two points. We are looking to more found for our project. And the, the very important, which I consider, is how uh, we can uh, keep in parallel making more awareness and the working with the different stakeholders in our city to the question of uh, urban mobility, which is very important. Yes. Well, thank you for this complete. Uh, testimony and uh, we see if we do have uh, the second person connected it's Mr. Um, oh yes <laughs> I can see you Mr. Sedlaji um, well welcome and uh, well we can hear your testimonies and after if there's any question directed to uh, to one of you we, we can take a, a few more questions but go ahead please just you know Tell us about the, the story, really, uh, the story about collaborating with, uh, with this pro the, the project. And for you, it was efficient building, so in the efficient building uh, community. So this is another aspect of our, our uh, major uh, priorities. Please, I'll give you the floor. 
Another person speaking. Um, uh, is there? Okay, it's okay now. <laughs> you can go ahead and, and speak. Yes, thank you for this opportunity. Actually, I would like to uh, introduce myself, but I will do it in French. It's more easier for me if you if if you, you don't have any objection. So, of course, uh, no uh, objection. Uh, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Donc, euh, tout d'abord, je tiens à me présenter. Je suis euh, Sheikh Ibseladji, je suis professeur à l'université de Tlemcen, Algérie, et euh, je suis également, j'étais euh, membre d'un euh, cadre supérieur à l'Agence nationale de l'utilisation et la rationalisation de l'utilisation de l'énergie, l'APRU, qui est l'équivalent de l'ADEME en France. Et bien entendu, Plus, plus euh, principalement, je suis membre fondateur de l'association Energy Cities Algérie. Donc, euh, lorsque le président de l'association, M. Asni, m'a sollicité pour euh, impliquer la ville de Tlemcen dans le projet euh, efficacité énergétique dans le bâtiment, j'étais très sensible parce que, euh, étant dans le domaine, je sais que le tertiaire et les raisons résidentielles consomme plus de 46% de la consommation nationale, globale. Donc, c'est un véritable problème énergétique qu'il faudrait absolument résoudre. Et euh, ce projet était un peu euh, tombé à point nommé pour justement répondre à cette problématique. Donc, euh, euh, très, très, euh, très euh, intuitivement, j'ai sollicité un ami qui, euh, qui était... Euh, qui est toujours euh, membre d'une association euh, de quartier euh, qui s'occupe de l'environnement et qui était en contact avec le vice-président de l'APC, la, la, l'Assemblée la, générale de, communale de Tlemcen. Donc, euh, ce contact a été établi et donc j'ai euh, expliqué un peu le projet. D'ailleurs, je devais d'abord euh, introduire l'association, la, la, d'accord, l'association Energy Cities, parce qu'elle est toute jeune elle est méconnue à Tlemcen. Donc, il fallait d'abord faire un travail de communication pour un peu euh, introduire l'association, ses objectifs, euh, et puis euh, le, les, 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 le, le plan de travail ou le plan d'action qui était dressé par notre association. Donc, euh, j'ai utilisé un peu mes, euh, mes talents de, de communication pour un peu euh, impliquer le vice-président qui a très vite adopté l'idée Et donc, il a été vraiment le porteur de, de cette idée vers les, euh, les, euh, les représentants de l'APC de Tlemcen. Donc, euh, il, il a pris euh, le bras le corps, le dossier, et donc il, il a fait un travail de sensibilisation au sein de son institution. Et euh, on a fini par déposer le dossier de, de, de candidature de, Tlem, de la ville de Tlemcen le 11 décembre 2020. Donc, euh, Et puis nous avons été, euh, donc on a reçu l'acceptation à l'adhésion de cette, de, 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 dans ce projet, le 10 mars 2021. Donc euh, une fois accepté, il fallait donc faire un, un autre travail de sensibilisation envers les pouvoirs publics parce qu'il fallait absolument avoir l'aval du ministère de l'Intérieur. Donc l'association Energy Cities a joué un rôle primordial dans cette, dans cette approche. Et euh, bien entendu, euh, en usant de nos contacts, parce qu'il y a des adhérents à l'association qui, qui sont des cadres supérieurs au ministère de, de, de l'Intérieur. Donc, ça nous a un peu aidé à, à faire passer l'idée, le, le projet très, très vite. Donc, euh, ce qui a permis le, la signature du MOU euh, le 1er avril 2021. Euh, je dois reconnaître que... Euh, la, 
le démarrage du projet n'était pas très facile. Beaucoup de, euh, disons de, de temps perdu parce que effectivement il y avait un échéancier qui était le, la, les, euh, les, euh, les, euh, le, le, enfin les, les, les élections, les élections euh, prévues, les élections communales prévues. Le, c'était prévu le fin 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 2021. Donc il y avait ce, 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 cette petite euh, quand même qui a duré quelques semaines pour pouvoir démarrer effectivement le projet. Donc euh, deux réunions ont eu lieu par visioconférence parce que effectivement on était euh, on était en période de Covid donc euh, on pouvait pas se déplacer et, euh, et ça quand même malgré cela on a pu quand même identifier euh, d'abord on, on s'est euh, on s'est présenté parce qu'il fallait quand même euh, connaître le vis-à-vis, -vis. donc euh, ça nous a, une première réunion nous a permis d'échanger un peu nos, euh, nos, euh, nos, nos visions, nos, euh, nos objectifs, euh, nos attentes, et puis euh, une deuxième réunion qui nous a permis de dresser un plan de travail sur un, euh, le moyen terme. Donc, euh, alors euh, la deuxième réunion a également et, et nous a permis d'identifier les besoins de, de la ville de Clemson. Euh, tout d'abord, en ce qui concerne les cahiers de charge concernant les appels à projets photovoltaïques, parce qu'effectivement, l'Algérie a commencé à, à s'orienter vers les énergies renouvelables, donc en particulier le photovoltaïque, mais, mais le, disons, le manque d'expérience nous, nous a fait faire un peu les cahiers, charge, les cahiers charge de façon inappropriée, ce qui a donné quand même des projets euh, très mal conçus. Donc, on voulait avoir l'expérience de, de la ville de Montpellier qui nous a été transmise à travers ce qui a été fait comme cahiers charge, etc., par la ville de, de Montpellier. Et euh, de l'autre côté, euh, le point le plus, euh, disons, le point noir en ce qui concerne la consommation énergétique, euh, dans les, la ville de Clemson, c'est l'éclairage, l'éclairage public. Donc, on voulait quand même avoir un feedback sur l'éclairage public, les systèmes de régulation, les systèmes d'optimisation, de, de, et puis euh, pour introduire une nouvelle génération d'éclairage public euh, euh, doté aussi de, de systèmes photovoltaïques. Donc, globalement, les, les échanges étaient euh, très intéressants mais pas à la hauteur de nos espérances, vu que ça nécessite quand même des, euh, une approche très démonstrative. Donc, heureusement qu'il y a la, le, le Covid a, donc, euh, est parti pour de bon, je l'espère. Donc, euh, on s'est on euh, mis d'accord pour se rendre à, à Montpellier, qui nous a, été, donc, euh, euh, qui nous a permis, surtout euh, les, les, les représentants de la, de, de la ville de Tiensen, de voir de très près ce qui a été fait en matière d'efficacité énergétique dans, dans, dans les écoles d'abord, parce que effectivement le, le climat de Montpellier ce, ce, est très similaire à celui de Tlemcen, donc très chaud. Et donc, euh, il y a eu quand même des choses faites à, à, à Montpellier qui nous a permis, donc qui a permis à, à, à représentant de, des cadres et élus de, de Tlemcen, de voir les, les actions menées pour réduire la consommation énergétique, euh, notamment en utilisant tout ce qui est euh, ventilation, euh, 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 optimisation de, de, de la consommation par une gestion mieux, mieux, mieux adaptée par rapport aux, aux tranches horaires, etc. Donc, donc, il y, a, il, y a, il, y a, il y a cette visite qui nous a permis de, donc de, de voir de plus, de plus près qu'est-ce qui a été fait. Et donc, les, 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 les élus et, et les cadres de, de, de la PC de Clemson sont partis, sont revenus avec une meilleure approche. Donc, effectivement, cette visite nous a permis de, de définir quelques objectifs, notamment la renforce, le renforcement des... Euh, des euh, des programmes de, de communication euh, dans le domaine de l'efficacité envers, d'abord envers 
les élus, ensuite vers euh, la population. Euh, deuxième point concernant l'appui à, à des cadres de l'APC pour être formés beaucoup plus vers, de, de, dans le domaine de, de, de l'efficacité énergétique. Et puis, ce qui nous a également euh, intéressé et intéressé la ville de Clemson, c'est euh, le concept qui a été développé euh, à Montpellier et qui, qui est en train, je pense, de se généraliser en France, le label « ville économe en eau ». Et ce label, c'est vraiment intéressant parce que, effectivement, euh, l'Algérie, avant la France, souffre d'une grande pénurie d'eau, donc... Euh, Jusqu'à il y a quelque temps, l'Algérie considérée, était considérée comme euh, région semi-aride. Maintenant, pratiquement, on peut la classer comme étant euh, une ville, un, un pays aride. Donc, un travail d'économie d'énergie dans le secteur de, de l'hydraulique, parce que euh, l'Algérie s'est dotée, comme probablement vous le savez, s'est dotée de centrales euh, de dessalement d'eau de mer. Donc, le dessalement, c'est un... C'est un processus très gourmand en énergie. Donc, il y a un aspect économie d'énergie et économie d'eau comme euh, nexus. Alors, pour conclure, cette, cette, cette visite nous a permis, au-delà du, du projet qui, qui reste à, à, à développer, à maintenir et à développer et à, 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 à découvrir d'autres perspectives, probablement dans d'autres... dans d'autres facette du, du projet Interregmet, euh, ça nous a permis également de renforcer le jumelage parce que probablement vous le savez, Clemson est, est jumelé à, à Montpellier, donc il y a, y, a, y a des aspects euh, euh, bien entendu économiques, techniques et euh, artistiques, et, euh, donc ça nous a permis de redynamiser cette, ce jumelage et donc euh, cette euh, et, 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 et donc, on s'attend euh, à la visite de la délégation de Montpellier euh, le, 5 novembre, le 5 novembre pour un peu euh, euh, un retour d'expérience déjà par rapport à ce qui a été euh, vu à, à, à Montpellier et renforcer euh, l'aspect communication envers les pouvoirs publics, notamment avec... Euh, avec le, le côté, le côté euh, euh, préfecture, mais aussi on a prévu, on a prévu euh, euh, un contact avec euh, les universitaires. Et encore une fois, il y a une école qui a été euh, ouverte euh, il y a deux ans de cela, sous, euh, sous l'égide du ministère de l'Intérieur, qui s'occupe de la formation des ingénieurs dédiés à la gestion de la ville. Donc ça, ça pourrait être, donc une visite également est prévue, ça pourrait être une, 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 une initiation à de nouvelles perspectives de, de collaboration et de, de coopération. Voilà, donc euh, on s'attend à ce que ce projet, donc euh, conclusion, ce projet a été très bénéfique et, et, et euh, je m'attends à plus d'investissement de, 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 de la part de la commune de Clemson et probablement de, 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 de la ville de Montpellier parce que finalement, on se partage les mêmes problèmes. Donc, se réunir pour mieux affronter cette problématique de l'énergie et de l'eau et bien entendu l'environnement. Voilà, je vous remercie. Merci. Merci, M. Seladji. Euh, C'était une bonne démonstration, en fait, de ce, de ce partenariat et de ce jumelage, en fait, qui va au-delà même du projet et, et qui, se, qui perdurera. Donc, euh, voilà, on est vraiment dans une situation où les uns comme les autres, on a, on a, euh, on, on a à s'apporter des solutions. Et, et vous l'avez bien souligné aussi, de, de parfois voir euh, en, en vrai comment ça se passe. Ben, ça, voilà, ça, ça, ça a vraiment un impact différent sur, sur les avancées du projet et, et voilà donc ce, ce genre de réunion. Donc je, on vous souhaite pour le mois de novembre euh, une, bonne, une bonne visite aussi de Teslem pour, 
pour en apprendre aussi et pouvoir intégrer ça aussi euh, dans, dans les projets. Euh, là, on a un peu dépassé l'heure là du, de, du, de 15 minutes, mais c'était très intéressant. Donc euh, voilà, je pense que du coup, ça, ça valait le coup. Euh, on peut peut-être, s'il y a une ou deux questions, on peut quand même les prendre parce que je pense que ça peut être euh, l'occasion voilà, pour, euh, pour des personnes, qui, des municipalités qui ont aussi envie de faire cette démarche de... De, bah de, de vous poser une question ou l'autre euh, à vous ou à, ou à Madame Youssef. Euh, Est-ce qu'on a quelqu'un qui lève la main, qui, qui voudrait poser une question directement à l'un ou l'autre ou, ou aux deux Moi, bon, si ce n'est pas le cas, bah de toute façon, je pense que vous êtes toujours disponible, je pense, pour répondre à des questions en, en dehors de cette réunion. Hein, on sait maintenant qu'il y, y a plusieurs, vous êtes, vous êtes de nombreux projets aussi, enfin, de nombreuses municipalités à participer au projet Interregmed. Là aussi, on a bien identifié euh, euh, deux. Et, et donc, je vous remercie encore pour ce, ces témoignages, pour, euh, voilà, pour ce, ce, cette, ce, 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 ce moment de, de, de partage privilégié, pour le coup, d'une expérience à la fois humaine et professionnelle. Et, euh, et si Francesca, est-ce que tu veux euh, ajouter un petit mot de, de conclusion pour la réunion ben, Du coup, merci beaucoup aussi euh, de ma part, euh, à Laila et Célard pour euh, vos témoignages. Et je vais switch en anglais. Sorry for to have taken more time than expected. Uh, but it was really important to have these two testimonies and um, we hope that it was also interesting for you. Uh, we had uh, some questions in the chat, but my colleague has already answered. And anyway, we will be uh, here with you, uh, available for you, so you can uh, contact us um, if, you have, uh, if you want additional uh, information. We will organize uh, um, other meetings in the future, so just stay tuned. And uh, thank you so much for your, for your participation. Merci beaucoup à tous. Et on va organiser uh, sûrement des, des événements dans le futur, donc uh, vous êtes les bienvenus. Et, et suivez-nous sur le site et, um, et on, va, on, a, on a disposition pour toute information additionnelle. Merci beaucoup. À vous tous. Merci. 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 Au revoir. Au revoir.